And so, we finally killed a whale. We, Not B whale, but A whale. A whale. That's that's good. That's a start. Moby Dick question mark? No, just <laughs> m- <laughs> Noby Dick. Noby. <laughs> Um, uh, week two of Moby Dick. Week mm. two of Sandy losing her collective shit. We're just out at sea in so many ways. In, so, in more <laughs> ways than one. So we've got a whale now. Wait, what are, what are we? Wildcats. No. Um. Oh, a literature. <laughs> we're still a literature. We're still Sam and Sandy. Only Sandy is less of herself now, I think. <laughs> losing pieces. She's, she's <laughs> Every hour that passes. <laughs> Her um, leg, the leg is a metaphor for her sanity. Yeah. She's going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. And, uh, who am I? Am I Moby Dick? No, am I? I guess I'm I the... wish someone had done this for me. That's, that's my only regret. Like, I wish I could have, someone could have just been like, you don't need to read these three chapters because they're just about whales and paintings <laughs> and well, have you... no bearing on the story. But maybe, maybe this is for the best. Is it though? Are you gonna be the same after this? I don't know. Am I the same? <laughs> like, I'll tell you now. No. <laughs> All right. Shall we just shake it going? Yeah. Let's dive back into these choppy waters of okay. your <laughs> of your. That's a time period. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. So the whale is lashed to the side of the ship, so they can start dealing with its parts um, in the daylight. Yep. It's nighttime now, so it's like leave it there for the moment. The men. Try to kill and drive off the sharks with their spades, which are like shovels. I know what like spades, spade is. But, but they're for cutting. For cutting the whale. So I'm picturing a shovel that's like sharp. Sharp. A, sh- a sharp Knife on sticks? I don't know. Anyway, Queequeg nearly has his hand cut off oh, by no. the sharp teeth of one of the dead sharks that's hoisted onto the ship for its skin. I don't know what they do with shark skin. Do they make leather? They can make stuff out of it. Make stuff out of it? Yeah. Make stuff out so of they anything, do that. really. Hmm. Then we all set about the gory process of cutting in. Dope. Let's which go. is the, the processing the whale's different parts. So I love this. We start by like peeling off the blubber, like an orange rind. Nice. Um, and other bits that he goes into. Is that more actually how later. he um, described it? Like yes. an orange rind? <laughs> yeah. Yes. They set the whale free. For, once they get their bits, they set the whale free for its funeral. In quotation marks. What? Funeral. Where the mourners, he says, are sharks and carrion birds. Um, interestingly, the floating whale corpses are sometimes mistaken for rocks and shoals, and thus entered on mariners' charts, causing future whalers to actually avoid the area so they don't get beached. Which is um, so the after... whale continuing to inspire terror even in death. Yeah, that's a pretty good line. But after they've gotten, after they've stripped it of its parts, they just dump it back the rest in the of it, ocean. Back in the ocean. You're going to let me know what the parts are, right? Because I'm genuinely it interested It happens, yeah. That. More, yeah, okay. yeah. So he talks about the whale's beheading for Yikes. a while, um, how hard and weird it is because the head is like half of the body. <laughs> um, that's where the most valuable spermaceti is held, which is what the sperm name, spaghetti. name is from, sperm spaghetti. It's a valuable wax-like substance found um, in the oil, in like the head. And that's what they extract the finest, nicest oil from, I think. What do you use whale oil for? I'm anyway? um, mainly burning lamps and candles and stuff. Oh yeah, that um, makes sense. No, but other stuff, I think that. I think they use it to make perfumes and and cosmetics and all sorts of stuff. Then they kill a right whale, which is actually a baleen whale, and they're like, "Why are we doing this?" There's What's a right nothing. whale? It's, it's just another kind of whale, but it's a, it's one that eats krill. It's not a uh, sperm whales have teeth. They're predators. They they eat like um, oh. they eat giant squid and stuff like that. Um, whereas the baleen whales aren't eat the, eat the mm. krill. So they're getting this one. Baleen is used for corsets and stuff, so it has some value, product value, but it doesn't have nearly as much corsets. oil. Corsets? How? You know the burning in corsets? Boning comes from whale bone. But I don't think it was actually bones of the whale. I think they used the baleen, which is like a flexible That's pretty cool. brush bristle kind of material. Oh, the thing in the... Yeah. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's actually what they use. But everyone's like, eh, why are we catching a right whale? They don't make as much money. Yeah, and whatever. Um, but apparently having the head of a sperm whale on one side and the right whale on the other side of the ship is supposed to be a good luck charm that's pre- that prevents your ship from capsizing. Sure. So that's nice. Where do they put the heads? They just hang them off the side. They lash them to the side. So it's like it's got little water wings. 
Oh, God. But it's well and, Yeah. Dripping blood into the ocean with sharks following. Oh, great. Love it. Uh, it sounds like a really fun time. Stub and Flask talk for a bit about how they don't like Fadala. The, the uh, guy who stowed away. Oh, yeah, the little Asian guy. Yeah. Did they really sew away if Ahab's like... Yeah, does it, does it count? I don't know. Um, and they say how when he stands in Ahab's shadow on the deck, Ahab's shadow lengthens and darkens, which is probably a metaphor. So anyway, then there's a full chapter on a description of a sperm whale's head. Then we get a full chapter on the right whale's head. Then we get another full chapter on a single part of the sperm whale's head. Then another chapter on uh, the upper part of the whale's head. Nah, bro. Then we get another chapter on how they get oil out of it. That ain't it. Tashtago accidentally falls into the head. Oh! <laughs> Hi, which is weird to think of, but yeah, apparently it's 20 feet deep. Who is this? Who, who this? Tashtago is the um, Native American. Ah. Um, Harpinia. And they have to throw him a line and Queequeg has to jump in to save him. So Queequeg. that's intense. Then we conduct some phrenology. What? We don't have to do it. On the whale. <sighs> Apparently the sperm whale's large clear brow gives it the dignity of a god. And that its pyramidical silence demonstrates its genius. So that's nice. Then there's another chapter on the sperm whale's skull. And it says its spinal cord is much more important than its skull. Nah, bro. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> They made a German ship. So things are happening. The Jungfrau, which means virgin. Huh. With a captain who's bad at catching whales. Oh. They see some whales and race for them. The Pequot gets uh, an old knobbly whale that sinks as soon as they lash it alongside, threatening to sink the ship. Apparently Uh-oh. it's impossible to predict which whales will float and which ones will sink. What? Yeah. When you kill them? Mm-hmm. But shouldn't they just float because they're dead? Yeah, don't all. Yes. Apparently some whales are more floaty than others, so baleen whales are apparently are better for hunting because they float. Mm-hmm. Um, Whereas sperm whales? They, yeah, there's bowhead and bright whales are considered the ideal whaling targets because there's someone dose on their foot when they kill, so I guess sperm whales just fucking sink. They can, yeah. It might have to do with whether their lungs are full or not at the time mm. of dying as well. That was one thing I was thinking of. The Jungfrau chase a finback whale which is a useless whale that looks like a sperm whale but is too fast to be caught <laughs> they are bad at everything well they named their ship virgin <laughs> i named my ship chad yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chapter about jonah again this time focusing on the historical merit of the story what? he speculates what a spout is made of water or air he spends a chapter on the tail the Pequod sails through Indonesia without making port. They encounter a giant herd of sperm whales that stretch as far as the Ooh. eye can see, swimming in a circle. Have you ever, like, thrown bread to koi in a Chinese garden? Nah, bro, you don't do that to them. You know, they're like... Is that what they, are, they form a little whirlpool. Like, they all gather and they start swimming around and around and around, around in a circle. Is that what happened? I think that's what he's describing, but with whales. Did they catch a lot? Because that means they're, they're going to make bank. Well... What? As they set about pursuing the whales, they get chased by Malay pirates. Oh. And in escaping the pirates, they end up in the center of the circle of whales, like Ooh. a little placid lake. Um, they harpoon one whale who okay. flounders in pain, and then the whole herd panics. But they do end up successfully capturing her, but just the one. Just one? Just okay. the one. Nah, bro. One? The thing that really struck me, especially with this chapter, is how many whales there were. Yeah, they could have... Like, they're like... Thousands and thousands and, and thousands. And they only have one? They're not that good. Well, though. just like how many have been killed since the mid-1800s that you can't see big pools of schools of whales anymore. That's true. They're... Like they used to, yeah, you'd come across a pot and it would stretch as far as the eye can see. Yeah. And now it's like... Rare. You see one. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. That sucks. Pretty nice. And that's... imagine like if you come across the breeding ground or something, you'd see a lot, but... Yeah, that's it why... It wouldn't be like in, that, um... just hanging out. In the uh, Avengers Endgame, uh, oh, yeah. Captain America said that ever since the population was halved, he saw a pod of whales in the, in the like, what's a river in New York? The, the, Hudson. the Hudson, yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know about that. Because it's brackish water. Halved. Anyway. I don't, I don't know. Why would Captain America lie to me? <laughs> Why would he do that? All right. It's Chris Evans. He would never lie to me. Nope. 
We spend a chapter on terminology. Nah, dude. Schools of Wales. Next. All right, I'll skip that. No, I'm kidding. If you wrote <laughs> you, something like, like harem schoolmasters, basically, you like have a harem and a schoolmaster. What? So that's a yeah, I know, of course, right? Like a bunch of female wells with one bull well, a or harem. harem. Oh, harem, ooh. whatever. Um, or you can get a pod, basically a frat of young male whales. Yeah. Looking for their own pods. Anyway, the Chads. major difference, yeah. The major difference between males and females, according to Ishmael, is that the males abandon injured comrades while the females do not, even risking their own lives to aid and comfort a friend. That's just, that's not a disgrace. <laughs> Girl power. Then we spend two chapters what? on the niceties of whale ownership. <laughs> so, fast fish versus loose fish. Basically, if a whale is dead but not tied to a boat, it's a loose fish, and that means it's fair game for anyone. If it's tied to a boat, someone's got it. It's a fast fish, and that belongs to them. And then he's like, metaphorically, everything in the world can be conceptualized according to this code that judges possession to be the sole legal criterion for ownership. Even entire nations, Ishmael observes, can be classified as fast fish or loose fish, e.g. colonized. Yeah. Whatever. What a great, what a great allegory for uh, colonization. Thanks, Ishmael. Now we're meeting the Rosebud, which is another whaling ship who's bad at everything and is trying to get Citizen oil. King. Yes. Oil out of whales they found dead. Oh, that's... Um, which is possible, kind of. Stubb, but not in this case. Stubb goes aboard to tell the captain the whales are worthless, although he knows something that the other sailor doesn't. What? The second whale, dead whale, that this ship has might contain ambergris, a valuable substance found in the intestines of sick whales. Gross, right? What is it? Um, it, it gets made into perfume. Amber grease. Amber grease. It's it looks like cheese and it smells beautiful apparently. Beautiful. Beautiful. What kind of and cheese? And it's in the intestines, like lumpy white cheese. Ugh. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, I wanna look it up. I wanna see it. Sounds gross. I'm into it. Yeah, so Stubb gets the sailor to help him trick the French captain of the rosebud into thinking that the blasted whales pose a threat of infection to the mm-hmm, crew. Mm-hmm. The captain dumps the whales and Stubb, pretending to be helpful. As the Pequod's boats tow the second whale away. <laughs> uh, and as soon as the robot rosebud leaves, they uh, get some of that sweet, sweet amber grease from okay. that whale. Chuck it here. I want to see it. The, so that looks like a very pretty bit of amber grease, but then the other ones are kind of like lumpy. Lumpy. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible that's refined or something. It is Wh- from the National oh, Geographic. Amber so. grease. Whale vomit that, <sighs> Why? that gives a high fragrance. So it's like little lumps in the... Yeah. So it's only found in sick whales. Mm-hmm. Huh. A taste of edible feces. Delicious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so we get our next a chapter to explain ambergris, which I've already, already gone, gone over with you. Um, yeah, the rendered oil of whales is actually nice smelling and a powerful cleanser. Apparently live whales, according to Ishmael, smell like women. Naturally, pleasantly musky. Live whales. Yep. So, Kevin Hart, little tambourine yeah, cabin boy pip. He's drafted to be a replacement oarsman. Oh no. I guess one of them died. Can't remember. Yeah. Um, and he cannot handle it. <laughs> When the bottom of the boat hits the whale, Pip freaks and bails, jumping into the sea. Everyone is mad at him when they have to cut the whale loose to save him when he gets tangled in the lines. Stubbs warns him not to do it again, but he does. What? To teach him a lesson, Stubb leaves him out there in the ocean. To teach him a lesson, so death. I think they come back from eventually, but like after a couple hours, potentially a day. So he was just like floating on a dead whale In the whale open corpse, ocean. And he's just like, guys, please. No, there's no dead whale. He's just out in the ocean by himself. How does he not die there? Um, uh, I don't know. But the experience traumatizes him into incomprehensibility. Most think him driven mad. Ishmael, however, thinks him now endowed with divine wisdom. Because Ishmael's, he, well, he's a romantic, isn't he? Now, spermaceti, which sperm is... Sperm spaghetti. Sperm spaghetti. Um, from the head of the whale, the most valuable, cools into a solid. So the sailors have to squeeze it to warm it up and make it liquid again, right? Ew. Ishmael has fun. Here's a quote, possibly the best quote in the entire book. <clears throat> squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. 
All the morning long, I squeezed that sperm till I myself almost melted into it. I squeezed that sperm till a strange sort of insanity came over me, and I found myself unwittingly squeezing my co-laborers' hands in it, mistaking their hands for the gentle globules. Such an abounding, affectionate, friendly, loving feeling did this avocation beget that at last I was continually squeezing their hands and looking up into their eyes sentimentally as much as say, oh, my dear fellow beings, why should we no longer cherish any social acerbities or know the slightest ill humor or envy? Come, let us squeeze hands all round. Nay, let us all squeeze ourselves into each other. Let us squeeze ourselves universally into the very milk and sperm of kindness. I think he started, he's trying to start like an orgy. <laughs> that I could keep squeezing that sperm forever. Well, the end of don't. <laughs> so, so wait, the sperm. So is this? It's from the head. So I don't know why it's called why is sperm. It in the so it's not like bull sperm. It's not sperm in that sense. It's I don't know what sperm. Oh, it's sperm it up, just means know. like a creamy white substance or where that comes from. But anyway, <laughs> next we get a chapter about the whale's penis. Oh, tell me more. Uh, not. Oh no, you skipped that one. <laughs> yep. You skipped the dick and Moby Dick. <laughs> yep. Um, How big is the penis? Same, it's big. I don't know. Oh, you they so... use they tan the hide of it to make aprons and shit. I don't know. Uh, Ishmael attempts to try to explain the triworks, a set of pots and furnaces that boil the blubber to mm. extract the oil from it. He associates the triworks with darkness and a sense of exotic evil. It has an unspeakable, wild quote Hindu odor about it. <laughs> that <laughs> face. <laughs> I don't know. Such as may lurk in the vicinity of funeral pyres. So burning flesh, I guess. Ooh. Furthermore, the pagan harpooners tend it, so you know it's, it's not Christian. One nice thing, unlike other ships, whalemen have free access to the oil, um, which means they each keep a collection of lamps. Oh, good for um, The interior of whale ships is illuminated like a temple, whereas a lot of other ships in a lot of other places during this period in time, you have Dark. to pay... Just dim, you know, one candle per room kind of shit, you know? I guess they so do that's nice have for them. oil over there, so they could just... Mm -hmm. I guess it just burns longer. Yeah. Because so, it's so fatty. Yeah. Yeah, Eventually, what, do you, what do you know? Um, so, is a truncation of the sperm city whale. Sperm city originally mistakenly identified as the whale's semen. Is a semi-liquid breakfast substance, blah, blah, blah. So it's just, like, named after the thing that they thought it was, but then it wasn't. Gross. <laughs> so what is it actually? So spermicidia is, yeah. is the whale oil from specifically, I guess. Why is it from the head? I don't know. It's just uh, you know how camels have humps or bears have humps where they keep like food and blubber and, oh, yeah, and energy for the winter and stuff? It. I think that's it's that kind of thing. Is there a photo of it? The spermicidia? I'd love to see it. Love to see it. But yeah, no, I understand why it took you so long. Because you yeah. had to listen to it. And then you're listening to it, you're like, is this important? I don't... <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so the two theories for spermaceties of organs, um, biological function, suggest that either controls buoyancy mm -hmm. oh, yeah. or acts as a focusing apparatus for other locations. Ah, there have okay. been concrete evidence to support both theories, so who the fuck knows? Not the whale experts. <laughs> Wexperts. Her mother probably knows. He's he doesn't even know. He doesn't know shit. <laughs> he's in the 1800s. Sometimes he's talking about stuff. I'm like, well, that's proven wrong now. So shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's he listening to the audio book. He's like, shut yeah, up. Shut up. <laughs> um, okay. Eventually, they meet an English whaling ship named the Samuel Enderby, where the captain of that ship has lost an arm to Moby Dick. Oh, my God. So they relate yeah. over that a little bit. Yeah. Could just be like... <laughs> Ahab opens the cans and this guy climbs the ladders. Oh, oh God, well, that's, that's cute. Nice. <laughs> um, the, this captain, unlike Ahab, learned his lesson and doesn't uh, plan to hunt Moby Dick again. But he has seen it recently oh. and he tells Ahab which way it went. And instead of indulging the English hospitality, Ahab immediately returns to his ship and sets out after it. He's like, oh yeah, I didn't see the white whale. He's like, which way? <laughs> like, it's there. like, you, you don't want the tea? <laughs> <laughs> Is there, there's an Ahab-shaped hole in the wall. Where like, <laughs> <laughs> like with a pig. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the crew's like, 
but there was going to be biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> um, we get one chapter on the name Samuel Enderby, who was an important English whaler who did important things. Then we spend three chapters measuring whale bones. Oh, great. Then we spend a chapter assuring ourselves that it is impossible for people to hunt whales to extinction. Well... <laughs> Um, Ishmael says that though whales may not travel in herds anymore like they once used to, and though their haunts may have changed, they remain nonetheless. They're probably hiding deep in the ocean. Maybe no. at the poles. Uh, no. <laughs> yep. Ahab damaged his leg while boarding the English ship. But he only has one. He damaged his fake leg, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Um, so he gets the carpenter to craft him a new one. Indeed, just before the Pequod sailed from Nantucket, Ishmael relates, Ahab had been found lying on the ground with a whalebone, with his whalebone leg twisted around, almost piercing his groin. Yikes. So, so the carpenter does. Does um, the carpenter on board? Yeah, yeah. Because what happens if a ship gets a hole in it? You die. Oh, most ships duct have, tape. Yeah. No, um. Wood duct tape, yeah. Um, most, <laughs> most, most, most ships have a carpenter. Well, I guess that makes sense. I guess. And a blacksmith as well, I think. What are they smithing? Um, boat stuff, it's boat fine. Stuff. Yeah, just boat stuff. Harpoons, for example, if you're on a whale boat. Anyway, some oil casks in the hull are leaking. Starbuck informs Ahab and tells him they have to stop to fix them. I guess you can't fix them while you're sailing. Why not? You can. Maybe you don't have enough people to do it. He has anyway. a secret crew. Sea crew. It's a secret. Oh, yeah, I get it. Ahab refuses to stop when they're so near his goal. <laughs> Starbuck argues and Ahab points a musket at him. No. Oh. Starbuck says, I ask thee not to beware of Starbuck. Thou wouldst but laugh. But let Ahab beware of Ahab. No. <laughs> beware of thyself, old man. After he goes, Ahab relents and orders the casks repaired, which Starbuck respects he simply did to avoid angering the crew who he will need in his revenge plot that's true that's true Queequeg gets super sick oh no Queequeg yeah, and asks the carpenter to make him a cute little coffin oh wait what <laughs> like in the shape of a boat so he can be floated out to sea like his mates back home instead of sunk to the bottom of the ocean I think it's the carpenter is like I'm already I'm doing so much I gotta I'm, fix the I'm cost. busy you know. <laughs> he's gonna make a leg he does it he's like sure um, he fills it with the stuff he likes, his harpoon, his tomahawk pipe, yojo, his idol. How sick is he that he has to have He's a... He's super sick. He's like about to die. What? Do we know with what? Just like, you know, old time. Sea sickness. It's probably... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just like a Scurrying. cold and then, yeah. you know, because he just died back then. He tests it out, lying down in it and closing the cover and Pip dances around the coffin. He asks Queequeg to look after Pip, his former sane self, who he believes is dead and went to paradise. Oh, great. That's dark. <laughs> now his coffin is made, Queequeg starts feeling better. <laughs> and he's up and about, and he starts using his coffin as a cupboard. Just keep, his, <laughs> keep his stuff in. The carpenter's like, what the fuck? And he oh, starts carving the patterns of his tattoos into the wood. Dope. Which is apparently like the story of his, his creation story of his Oh, family. he's like um, Maui in Moana. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, same Pacific Islands-ish area, I guess. He's the rock. <laughs> oh, we get a chapter on the Pacific Ocean and how much Ishmael likes it. <laughs> yes. um, then we get a chapter on the blacksmith, who apparently had a pretty good life but lost his wife and child to alcoholism and ran away to the sea to avoid Wait. shame. Wait, how did you lose a wife and child to alcoholism? Were they both alcoholics? No, no, he was, and then they left him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's like a it was like a four-year-old and alcoholic because <laughs> they're just like, ah, fuck you, dad. <laughs> oh, my God. No, all right. Um, Ishmael explains that the sea beckons to broken-hearted men who long for death but cannot commit suicide. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Ahab asks the blacksmith to make a special harpoon with which to kill the white whale. What's special about it? Is it shaped super cool? Um, it's made out of the stubs of nails of racehorse shoes, which is apparently the toughest steel known. Man, how many racehorses did they, like... Die. <laughs> did they take shoes off of? <laughs> Although Ahab gives the blacksmith directions, he soon takes over the crafting of the harpoon himself, hammering the steel... Um, on the anvil, tempering it with the blood of the three harpooners instead of water, which is super creepy. And the scene ends with Pip's laughter ringing through the ship, which is also super creepy. 
Uh, how did they get the harbinger's blood? Were they were they sleeping and he was just like letting out some blood? <laughs> just syringing. He amazing Amy'd them. Anyway, a couple of spooky things happen. Like what? Oh, I love it. Oh no, I skipped a whole paragraph. Oh great. Okay, so we got a new mic. <laughs> so we're um we're back the mic exploded the mic exploded we well my on, mic exploded it's, sam was on fire i was on fire um no one put me out kind of rude <laughs> <laughs> um we thought you'd know how to stop drop and roll um this isn't hereditary you don't just tony collect scream at me <laughs> right? um so we got a new mic yeah so and now we're back so shall we we're gonna carry on my way <laughs> <laughs> banjo solo While keeping a night vigil over a whale that was too far away to take back to the ship immediately, Ahab hears from Fadala the prophecy of his death. Ahab's death. Oh, yeah. That's never a good thing to hear. No. You know? They were like, well, what if you, like, thought you were about to die and someone's like, you'll die when you... (laughs) All the prophecies, like, out of all the prophecies you could probably hear, someone saying, well, I have one of your death. It's like, that ain't it. What would be worse than that? Prophesizing. What if you knew last year it was going to happen this year? I try to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. no. Whoa! 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 Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Too uh, dark. Uh, before Ahab can die, he must see two hearses. One, quote, not made by mortal hands, and one made of wood from America. American wood. <laughs> it's, it's good. That mm-hmm. rhymed. The wood is good. <laughs> good wood. <laughs> good wood. Um, Since it is unlikely that a hearse would be seen at sea, Ahab believes that he will not be killed on this voyage. He's like, maybe some other hearse. <laughs> Fadala also tells him that he, Fadala, will die before Ahab. Bro. And also that only hemp can kill the captain. Hemp is in the... Weed. <laughs> Sam just winked at me. <laughs> <laughs> hemp is in the... Oh. <laughs> Four twenty. No, the rope. Ahab um, also takes the latter prophecy to mean that he will be hanged. So again, he thinks that his death is unlikely to happen at sea. Because they don't have nooses at sea. Nice. Um, Nice? (laughs) The plural of noose is nice. Noosei. Noosei. Um, Um, Do you ever wish prophecies were more, like, you know, less vague? A little bit more nice? No, no, a little bit more, like, really, like, so this is when you're going to die. Well, but isn't the point of the prophecy not to actually give you information, but for you to be like, ah, (laughs) when it, like, happens? It's like, ah, I I see, see. (laughs) and I die. (laughs) So it's like, ah, I (laughs) see. You wake up in like heaven or whatever, and you're like, e. <laughs> Fuck me. What if the prophecy is like you get to finish your last sentence? <laughs> and you're like, yes, good. That's what I want. Oh, what if it wasn't? You'd always be nervous. <laughs> you like say anything. I gotta say like things. Or if someone quick. interrupts you, you'd be like, stop it, somebody could die. <laughs> And it's funny because I work at a call center, so it's just like, let me get this out real quick because if I don't finish my sentence, I could die at any given point. And they're like, what? (laughs) Oh my god, Ahab. What's my pin? (laughs) Do you get that? Is that what people ask you? Oh, they've tried. I'm like, bitch, we don't have that. (laughs) A couple spooky things happen. A typhoon. Fucking spooky already. (laughs) Done. Um, in a typhoon, the ship's three masts are struck by lightning. Bruh, three no. bits of lightning, I guess, and are lit on fire. Ahab oh. thinks this is a good omen. Everyone else thinks it's a bad omen. The ship on fire? Ahab's like, <laughs> this is where I need to be. <laughs> it's like, tell it's meant to be. feel like we're in a good place right be. now, everyone. <laughs> Everyone's on fire. Yeah, everyone's like, got buckets of water. They're like, sure. <laughs> He's like, you know who Ahab is? He's that dog that this is fine. <laughs> Everything's on fire. <laughs> well, they put up lightning rods anyway. Starbuck wants to take oh. a reef, which is get rid of some sails. I always forget that there's a, a, s- a singular Starbuck. <laughs> How much for a coffee? <laughs> <laughs> One Starbuck. <laughs> Like a doubloon. Mm. Like the Spanish doubloon. Like um, sandbox mm. in Spongebob? 
Where is so it? taking a reef means um, bringing in some sails. <laughs> Uh, in a storm, it's dangerous, as you might guess, to have a lot of sails up. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ahab won't hear of it. Suspended above the men um, on the main topsail yard. <laughs> Just ship things. <laughs> Tashtago thinks to himself that tailors care more about rum than about the storm. Nobody asked, but okay. Tailors. Ta- did I say tailors? Yeah. <laughs> Sailors. <laughs> <laughs> there's like tailors like well there is like a carpenter just over time making like a hearse <laughs> like another peg leg I wouldn't be surprised if there's a tailor just, and Ahab's like make me a cape <laughs> and they're like I need to make more sails man yeah. when the storm finally dies down Starbuck goes below to report to Ahab on the way to the cabin he sees a row of muskets including the very one that Ahab had leveled at him earlier bro he picks up one of the muskets and mm-hmm. rests it against the wood of the cabin wall, right about where Ahab's sleeping head would be. Ooh. I always love a good shooting through the wall to get someone who's on the other side of the wall scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's more open than you think. It's more, yeah. He lowers the gun, thinking ah. better of it, and returns to the deck asking Stubb to wake Ahab and inform him of the change in weather. Boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. (laughs) Boring! (laughs) On the deck the next day, Ahab realizes the storm threw off the magnetic poles in the compasses. That's not good. And I wrote, Kumpai? Compacts. Another bad omen. But Ahab doesn't take it to heart. No, Ahab's like, it's fine. I know directions. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He uses the opportunity to show his men how he can make his own compasses, compass needle from scratch, which is a pretty good skill, to be honest. With all the other orienting devices, yes. I know question. how to make a, I know how to make a compass out of a leaf, uh, a needle, and like fresh water, and I learned it from the movie The Hunt. Okay. You put like. I'm impressed. Yeah. I, well, I don't know how to do. It. I saw. Like, could you? Do it. Okay, so you don't know how to do it. I can do it. So you just lie to my face. I always lie to your face, like when I say I'm so excited for this week's episode. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you don't want to go here with me, Sandy. I can inflict more pain than you can inflict on me. (laughs) All right. If you want to get an opinion off. (laughs) Is that meme with the dog? That it's like... It like heard something on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's like its bark is worse than its bite. And then it tells you something horrible. (laughs) <laughs> or something and then you cry I don't know anyway so it makes his own compass um, with all the other orienteering orienting devices out of order Ahab decides to pull out the seldom used log in line a device used to measure a ship's speed I don't know how I I didn't read that <laughs> it just goes it's really fast <laughs> <laughs> like dope. It goes, whoa <laughs> woo <laughs> slow down there sailor <laughs> Because of heat and moisture, the line breaks, and Ahab Rah. realizes that he now has none of his original navigational devices. He calls for Pip to help him, but Pip answers with nonsense. Oh. Ahab, touched by Pip's crazy speeches, says that his cabin will now be Pip's. He likes him. They're friends now. <laughs> He's like, I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> That's a sailing term. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I think it's insane. Alana's like nodding enthusiastically. Alana knows. But, um, Pip's just like, yeah, I want to have a fucking whore bit my asshole. <laughs> and Ahab's like, you. You got Moxie, kid. <laughs> you get my sleeping quarters. As they get close to the equatorial fishing ground where Moby Dick is supposed to be, Where's the sailors it? think they hear mermaids or ghosts wailing. Turns out just to be seals. Oh. Still, it gets under everyone's skin. The next morning, one of the Pequod's crew falls from a masthead. The life boy. I that was his name. <laughs> Pequod. The life boy. I thought it was Queequeg. No, Pequod is oh, the name the of ship. the ship. Sorry. Queequeg is, yeah, Queequeg. Queequeg's the life the MVP. Bui that is thrown in after the man is old and dried out and fills with water and sinks. Great. The man drowns. Starbuck, Stub, and Flask decide to replace the life buoy with Queequeg's, <laughs> with Queequeg's coffin. <laughs> Another bad omen? Mayhaps. Mayhaps. The Pequod, still looking for Moby Dick, encounters the Rachel. Captain Gardner of the Rachel, after affirming that he has indeed seen Moby Dick, climbs, you look beautiful. Thank you. Climbs, Sam's got a fluffy scrunchie on top of her head, like a little crown. I do look really good. So Captain Gardner climbs aboard Ahab's ship and begs Ahab to help him find his son, whose whale boat was lost in the chase after the white whale. Ahab refuses, 
In fact, Ahab decides that he must be the first to sight the whale. I guess he wants his own doubloon. <laughs> He's like, whoever sights the whale first will get this doubloon. <laughs> <laughs> and, just like, and then he puts it in his pocket. <laughs> and they're like, hey, I think that's him. I think it's him over there. <laughs> Or it's like super glued to his finger. He just like, like, he kicks them out of the way with his peg leg. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> I saw it from up there. I'm sorry I couldn't get down so fast because I have a peg leg. <laughs> Me, Ahab. <laughs> so he asks Starbuck to help him get up the mainmast and watch his rope while he's up there. <laughs> while Ahab is up there, a black hawk steals his hat, which Ishmael considers a oh, what? Man. A bad, bad omen. <laughs> They meet a ship called the Delight, who has oh. had a run-in. I know, how nice. It's just how had a run-in. delightful, <laughs> one might say. <laughs> it has just had a run-in with Moby Dick oh, and has fuck. been devastated by it. A corpse dropped by the Delight I know you mean that like they ruined the boat, but it just sounds like they're like, oh <laughs> man, it was fucking... Oh. Emotionally devastated. They're just like, oh, my heart is just in my fucking stomach. <laughs> A corpse, <laughs> dropped by the delight, splashes the Pequod in a grim, quote, baptism. Oof. Could this be a bad omen? <laughs> Ahab and Starbuck. I love this call and response. Yeah, it's cool. Ahab and Starbuck have a nice moment. They exchange stories about their wives and children. Remember them? No. And Starbuck tries to convince Ahab to give his revenge up, but he says he simply can't. It's fate. When Ahab leaves Starbuck to look over the water's edge, he sees the reflection of Fadullah doing the same a little ways down. Now we have come to the final three chapters. Are two of them about whaling? <laughs> Just, whaling admin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what to do when your whole crew dies whaling? <laughs> Pre-spreadsheets, spreadsheets for whaling. That's literally what we do. <laughs> The chase, the first day. Oh my god, how many days are there? There's three. What? Oh, I one for each. Ahab can put my smell. hat back on. <laughs> the bird's gonna come for it. <laughs> that would be bad luck. No, it's a good. It's fine. <laughs> Anything would be better than this. So Ahab can smell whales in the air. Remember, they smell like women. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like ladies or whaleys. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the middle of the ocean, probably whales. <laughs> So um, I was like, who's got a whore on the boat? He senses in his Harry Potter scar that Moby Dick is near. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Ow. He climbs up the main royal mast and spots him at last, earning himself the doubloon. Congrats. <laughs> He's just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All the boats set off after the whale. When Moby Dick finally resurfaces, he does so, <laughs> bless you, Directly under Ahab's boat, destroying it and casting the crew into the water. Mobs, you're crazy. <laughs> the Pequod, with Starbuck at the helm, he's he's stayed back on the ship to Someone you know be to. in charge. Yeah, um, he helps drive the whale away and it saves the men who are rescued from the water um, from the other boats. I'm having a jaunty right now. It's cute. It looks like, I don't know, like you're going to wave someone on a cruise ship away, like with a handkerchief. Ahab, yeah, don't get killed by the whale. <laughs> the whale hab. Oh, no, you lost your hat. Oh, my God, the bird took it. <laughs> it's windy here in the ocean. <laughs> it smells like women. <laughs> ah, the sea. You know, ladies. <laughs> So the whale jets off and the Pequod pursues, keeping watch for his resurfacing. The chase, the second day. Man, that not a lot happened on the first day. Huh? No, they spent a lot of it probably like mopping. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> all the water. Oh, um, that poor carpenter. <laughs> Make another bow and then he's just like, I'm so tired. <laughs> just really would love an intern <laughs> yeah uh, what about crazy man he's not doing anything yeah. <laughs> the tambourine boy he's very busy being crazy and banging the tambourine they catch sight of moby dick again <laughs> did anyone ask about the gold doubloon like hey uh so i ended up getting that <laughs> um so you just kept your doubloon <laughs> and he's like well i saw the whale first <laughs> I clearly say to T and C says whoever saw him first got it, and that was me. He won on fair and square. 
Yeah. Like, I want Ahab's side here. <laughs> Team Ahab. Where are we? Uh, the whale destroys both Stubbs and Flask's boats Great. this time, but catches a couple harpoons in his side. So, you know, he's like, the little damage part is going down. Oh, no. Yeah, he's a boss. He's the final boss. Moby Dick is Truly. the final boss. There were all those other little whales at the start. <laughs> He nearly kills Ahab and his crew in a tangle of harpoons and lances caught in the lines as he thrashes about. So, like, every time they shove a harpoon in him... Shoves it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, he'll turn around and then the line will, like, fly out and then it'll tangle out. And he's just like, who's, really, who's really losing So he's, here? like, carrying around, like, just this net of, like, sharp objects with him everywhere. And he's, like, kind of thrashing and it's hitting boats and people. And... Oh, that's not good, is it? <laughs> For anyone involved. <laughs> well, we go there. Oh. Oh. The sea. <laughs> She's a harsh, nice smelling mistress. Is that the third day? The th- no, we're still on the second day. Oh, sorry. you said the sea. The sea. I thought you said siege. What? Oh, no. This- <laughs> no. We've we're been in- here for like four hours. I'm That's sorry. Fine. Don't okay, worry about so- it. <laughs> then he capsizes Ahab's boat. Again. Moby Dick does. Yes. Just give up Ahab. But I'm this time serious. Ahab's a whalebone leg is snapped off in the action. So there's that. Upon regrouping in the Pequod, Ahab learns Fidella has drowned, fulfilling the first part of his prophecy. He's like, well, he did say he died before me, but I could... He doesn't say that long. He doesn't say <laughs> Like, anyone say any nooser and nicer? <laughs> nooses. <laughs> anyone gonna hang me on my own boat? I don't think so. <laughs> the carpenter, hardworking man that he is, Poor man. hastily makes Ahab a new leg from the, <laughs> <Leave him> alone. <laughs> from the remnants of the whaling boat. The chase, the third day, Here and final. Go. It's just called the third day, but it is the final day, and I wanted you well, to know that. Well, that's a spoiler. I wouldn't have known. You asked how many days there were before, and I said three. And then what did I say? <laughs> there are no <laughs> records of that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they can't see Moby Dick until Ahab realizes... <laughs> oh, I forgot I wrote this. Um, it's a quote from the book. It's, I, he's chasing me now, not I him. That's bad. But it's written... <laughs> A, like A Y, so I was like A. A, that's bad. I like how this is his first bad omen. Like, (laughs) he's like lightning. It's fine. Losing his hat to a hog. It's fine. Losing all my boats. Corpse um, splash. It's fine. Corpse baptism. All the compasses break. It's fine. The the ship navigator that's like, whoa, you're going fast, but (laughs) breaks fine. (laughs) And finally, the whale's just like, you know what? I'm gonna harpoon you. And he's like, A, the ass bad. Like, maybe things aren't going according to plan. Did he say LMAO afterwards? So like, A, the A, LMAO, he's chasing me now. That's bad. They turn the ship about and Ahab mounts the masthead himself. He sights the spout of the whale. Gross. <laughs> it's just his breathing hole. No, I hate this. <laughs> oh, the gestures that I pointed up. I don't know. She didn't. She... <laughs> gesticulated quite rudely <laughs> oh. Starbuck is again left in charge on the Pequod sure as they shake hands final time Starbuck begs Ahab not to go don't do it man but he does Star- <laughs> sharks bite the oars of the boats as they pull away I guess ready for carnage this whale blood in the water oh. but maybe they're just like oh what's this <laughs> like fish vultures delicious <laughs> Oars. <laughs> it's it's their breadstick. <laughs> like you guys got any more of this? Is this like an unlimited kind of thing? <laughs> I love Olive Garden. Ooh, yes. What? The whale takes out the other two boats How as many it do surfaces. They fucking have? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't count. Ahab, as this is happening, Ahab sees Fidella's corpse lashed to the body of the whale with the lines from the previous day. The hand? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And he realizes that he's seeing the first hearse that Fidella had predicted, a vehicle, here the whale, that carries a corpse. Bro. Not made by human hands, right? Ahab commands Tash to go to find another flag and nail it to the main masthead as the Pequod's flag had somehow been removed from its usual spot. Is that what I matters think... right now, though? <laughs> Is that a priority? I think so. It can be seen. The Pequod can be seen. Maybe there's mist? <laughs> I don't know. Moby Dick turns around and heads for the Pequod at full speed. He smashes the ship with his big whale body. <laughs> Opening a large enough breach that the Pequod at last sinks. At last, down. like, thank God. <laughs> Passes away. 
You know what sucks? The only person on that ship that deserves to live is not Ishmael. No, the carpenter. <laughs> the it's man. Not Ishmael. No, fuck him. Fuck no, he deserves to die for writing this fucking book. <laughs> yeah, like, listen, story's real interesting, but I do not need 10 pages on. So a whale is an animal, and here are more things I'll tell you about it. <laughs> fuck you, Ishmael. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, the ship sinks. Yeah, um... Does Starbucks star die? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he star kicks. He star drowns. Um... He's... <laughs> he can, he can <laughs> swim. In the venti <laughs> trappuccino of the ocean. Yeah, that's pretty good, but he's... Yeah. It's venti. You don't like that? Do I look like I like it? The ship, Ahab realizes, is the second hearse of Fidella's prophecy. Since American Wood, baby. It, yep. <laughs> what did you just do? Yep. Ahab is now determined to strike at Moby Dick with all of his strength. He utters his last words. Towards thee I roll, thou all destroying but unconquering whale. To the last I grapple with thee. From hell's heart I stab at thee. Can you translate that for me? No. Nope. Thank you so much. What? <laughs> After, no, I was like, fuck you. There. Could have just said that though. Well, he could have, but he did. After doubting the whale, Ahab is caught around the neck with the hemp rope. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> probably with the hemp rope <laughs> flying line and dragged under the sea good night sweet prince Tashtigo meanwhile still tries to nail the flag to the ship's spar as it goes down he catches what? a skyhawk in mid hammer and the screaming bird folded in the flag goes down with everything else why did the that poor bird <laughs> it was just like man I love today good day <laughs> Mm, the he's, sea. Like, he's like, oh, fucking love flags. <laughs> and then he gets nailed. To the flag. Yeah. That's how he dies. Like, what the fuck? Is there a book about that bird? We should do that one. <laughs> this is the shortest book ever written. <laughs> I flew, I died. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the whirlpool created by the sinking Pequod pulls the remaining harpoon boats and crews down with it. Bro. Ishmael bobs to the top of the water, the yeah. only survivor, saved by Queekeg's Queequeg's coffin. Life raft. Queequeg doesn't even fucking get rest in his own no, coffin that he had really. especially made for yeah. him. That's a day so after fair. the wreck, the Rachel comes across him in her search for their captain's son and saves him. And that is the end of the story. That son is dead. Yeah, he's long gone. He's <laughs> see ya. <laughs> but um no, like the story itself was pretty fun and fine. A lot of lots of kooky characters, but oh my god. <laughs> I was telling Kate, I said something like, um, it's a really interesting story written by a really boring dude. I want to say 70% of it was for whaling enthusiasts. <laughs> and 30%- I reckon they'd probably be really into it, actually. <laughs> and 30% was for like whaling story enthusiasts. <laughs> And None of it was for us. Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did it. You did it. Took you oh, like when did you start reading this? Like many. fucking I started November. At the beginning of like last lockdown, so like February or March. And it took me a couple weeks because I, like, you know, when you have like two seven-year-old twins talking at you, you can't no. really like understand <laughs> what. No, I don't live in a haunted like hotel. I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> did I die there? Listen, you might. (laughs) Learning so much, aren't we, guys? It's nice. nice. You say that now, but the look of mania in your (laughs) eyes suggests otherwise. (laughs) I like how you're like, this book is my Moby Dick. It is. (laughs) Moby Dick. Your Ahab. Say sick. Say Ahab. Andy. Amhandra. Amhandra.